Welcome aboard. Aqua Kids is back, so weigh the anchor and get ready to set sail for more fun. We're here now at the Milwaukee River with Stuart, who's going to talk to us about habitat restoration. So Stuart, we've heard that the dams are causing problems for the habitat and the species that live here. So why were they even built in the first place? This dam here at Thienesville was built in the 1840s, original dam, to power wow. a grain mill. And in the 1940s, it was rebuilt into its present state to um, keep the impounded effect upstream. Uh, impounded effect? Impounded means lake-like, and the people upstream want to keep the same type of conditions they've had for the last 100 years so they can keep their boats and their docks in the water. Oh, so they probably didn't realize what they were doing to the fish species when they did that. No, they didn't. What problem has the dam created for the fish? Well, the dam has created multiple problems for the fish. For one, if you look at the dam, the fish cannot get up it. Native fish like walleye and sturgeon and northern pike cannot jump. That's almost a 10-foot jump there. They cannot yeah. make it up that far. And other animals have a hard time too. They can come, young fish can come over the top, but the adults, when they go up in the spring to spawn, they cannot make it past that. So it also affects, I, we talked earlier about impounded upstream. It warms the water temperatures for the fish upstream, makes it hotter. That's harder for the fish to live in the water. And the big, one of the big things that dams do is sedimentation. They don't allow proper sediment transport up and, down the street, up and down the river with sediment and rocks and rubble and stuff like that. So what have you done to help the fish? That's a great question, Drew. With a, a bunch of partners combine their money to build a fishway that allows the fish to step up onto the, above the dam. And it's right over here. You want to take a look at it? Yeah, let's go. OK, let's go. Here's the fishway, guys. Let's go look, take a look. OK. So Stuart, how is this fishway set up? Well, this is our fishway, and it, it's a series of 11 step pools. Wow. And you can see that we have two underneath the bridge. We have two step pools there, and we have one up here. And these step pools are just gradual elevation changes. The fish are able to make it up or swim up these little steps. And each step, when they get to the top over here, this is the outlet going in, up into the upstream portion. It allows them to, when they're done, they have made up the 8 to 10 feet of the dam and so that's how we get fish up above. So how high are the steps then? You can see the steps are anywhere from 8 inches to 12 inches and we try to keep the velocities low so most native species can um, move through them. All right, very cool. So how do the fish find the fishway? The fish when they're coming up usually during migration runs they'll run up into the dam and they'll be looking for current to find their way around it so the current from the fishway coming out the outlet right there they enter that and then they, they can navigate up through the fishway that way. It's pretty smart. Yes, it's really <laughs> cool. We're hoping it works really well for the spring and fall migration. Yeah. We're going to be electroshocking now, and electroshocking is using electricity to temporarily stun fish so we can um, capture them. So what's the purpose of it? How does it tie into habitat restoration? Well, for our fishway here at Thienesville, we want to know what type of fish are using the fishway. But hang on, if we're electroshocking and I stick this net in, will I get shocked? No, you're completely dry and you have electrician gloves on. You should be fine. I'll try. Yeah! Just kidding. <laughs> True. I guess we better get started. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, the electricity's on. Be looking for fish rising in the water. I got one. Nice catch, Drew. That is a log perch. It's log a little perch. minnow species that lives in the river. They don't get much bigger than that. <laughs> Got one. All right, good job. We have another log perch here. It's temporarily stunned, and we don't usually collect these, but these are um, native to the river. Another log perch. Is there a lot of these in here? Yes, we they live on the bottom and there's a lot of them right below the dam here. Rachel has a double, two more log perch. Yeah. Good catch. Oh, looks like I'm beating you, Drew. Nice ah. grab, Drew, look at that. That is a smallmouth bass. Sweet. There's a lot of smallmouth bass in this river at this time of year. This is a juvenile. 
We're not going to keep him, are we? No, we're going to let him go. But right. how we know that's a smallmouth bass, just wait a second. If you see the mouth, the mouth comes to the, the back of the mouth is in front of the eye. That's how we tell it apart oh. from the largemouth bass. Oh, here we go. That's a... I got him. I got two. Same okay. One. What do I got here? Drew, that looks like it's a common shiner. It has little bumps on its head. Those are called tubercles. Oh, really? So what do they do? I think when the during spawning they come out, but during most of the year they're not present. Oh yeah. So that's another minnow species that uh, we're not sampling. So you can just let that one go too. All right, little guy, go ahead. I got one. All right, what do we have here? This looks like a white sucker. Ooh. Good catch. It has. You. you can see it has a sucker mouth underneath. Yeah. So another um, forage fish species that other fish like to eat when they're young. So, but we're not sampling that today either. So you can let that one go. All right. Swim free. Common shiner. That one is. I'm gonna try to get a little bit bigger fish in this deeper water. I'll be right back. Okay. Oh, get the big one, Drew. Get it. Oh yeah. Good job, Drew. Let's take a look at this one. Nice. All right, that is. That is a red horse sucker, okay? They get quite a bit bigger than this. This is a rough fish. People don't usually fish for these, but they're kind of fun to catch. So, but we're not gonna, we don't usually survey these. We're gonna let it go. But good catch. Yeah. That's the biggest Thanks. one of the day. Hey, Rachel, it's still the winner. I know. <laughs> so, are the species we found pretty common for the area? Yeah, it was about what I expected to find below the stand. We had smallmouth bass and crappie and a few minnow species. Um, it's a good predator-prey relationship there that the little the minnows um, will spawn and have babies and then the bass and the crappies will eat them. So it's a, it's, it seems like everything's pretty healthy right now. That's good. Don't abandon ship. There's more adventure to come. Aqua Kids will be right back. Aqua Kids presents water sense tips. Ask your family to check the toilets in your house for leaks. Put dye tablets or food coloring into the tank. If color appears in the bowl without flushing, there's a leak that should be repaired. Get it fixed. You and your family could save up to 400 gallons of water a month. 